Hello folks and welcome to Shoot, Create, Captivate. Today I'm going to cover a very quick subject of changing my grey backdrops in my studio. Um, I don't have the space all the time to uh, rig up multiple coloured backdrops in the studio. Um, so I'd rather just take it over in post and do it a very simple way and a way that allows me to change my backdrop colours to literally any color I want okay so right here in Lightroom we've got an image that was shot against the gray backdrop um, I think this one came from Savage and I think it was either fashion gray or thunder gray um, I can't remember exactly which gray it was but it's gray um, what we're going to do is show you a little bit of software that will allow me to very rapidly extract my subject from this background allowing me to change the background to any color I want now there's multiple ways of extracting subjects from backgrounds, but to be honest, I find them all very lengthy and a very intricate process. Um, because we do a lot of studio shoots in the winter, um, and I also like to change colors of the background to match clients' wardrobe, um, I was looking for a bit of software that could allow me to extract images or extract subjects from backgrounds at high speed um, because we're doing a lot of volume work so here we go um, I'm going to right click the image I'm going to go over to edit in Adobe Photoshop and give us a second while that opens there we go okay right so we've got our subject here shot on a gray backdrop we've got a nice key light coming from this side of the subject and we've got a nice little kicker light over here um, that's really separated our subject from the background so let's get started we go to filter and the little bit of magic software that I use to extract my subjects from the background is called Topaz Remask 5 and I'm going to just show you this interface it's very very easy right so you click on Topaz Remask it launches the plugin and we've got this image here with a green filter over it okay now all I'm going to do is tell the software where the edges of my subject are, all right? And in this case, they tell you to use blue to mark that area, okay? I'm gonna take the Wacom tablet here and I'm gonna use the bracket key just to make the, the brush tool in the software a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna simply paint around the edges of my subject, just making sure that I select some of the gray and I select some of the subject. And I'm simply going to just paint around my subject like so. I'm going to come in here, paint in this area over here. And there's a little gap over there. I'm just going to fill that entire area with blue. I'm just going to come over to the subject on this side here and just draw my way around the subject. I'm not doing any complication or uh, complication. I'm not doing any complicated selections here, right? That's it. Just drawing. Now I'm going to tell the software to fill the gray area with red. Red is remove. I don't want that in the image. Okay. Same as this little area over here. Just select and fill that area with red. I'm going to come over to the red paintbrush tool here and I'm just going to paint inside this little area here. I'm going to say compute mask, right? And you see how fast this happens. Look at that. Selected the mask. The mask is just about ready. Now we can come in here and refine the mask. I'm going to paint with this green over here, over these areas, just make the brush a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to tidy up the mask so it gives us a beautiful selection, all right? In this case, and in these scenarios, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, okay? I could almost leave it like this, but I'm not. I'm just going to come into these little areas here and areas like that over there uh, we don't have to have a super accurate mask in these cases and i'm going to show you why in a moment um, instead of doing a solid fill background uh, we're going to use color filters to give us the colors of the background um, color filters uh, are transparent in a in a sense and you'll see now why okay uh, just come and clean that up on the outside here. You can see the mask isn't quite accurate in these areas here. So 
uh, we're just painting and creating a nice selection of the subject from the background okay around the hair here looks pretty good and um, that mask is almost done just cleaning cleaning up the edges right this is not important here right and maybe this little edge over here just paint it away okay so I'm going to click OK right and that's our subject separated from the background no crazy channel selections here and trying to find out which one's got the most contrast and blah 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 or uh, none of this coming in here and going select and mask and subject and it's just all very intricate okay so we've got our subject separated from the background and now I'm going to simply add in the colors I want so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer here and I go to photo filter and already we can see there's a bit of a color change in the background okay so if I bring this density up We've got a nice brown background. Hey, what do you know? That's looking great. Uh, we can come in here. We can come into these warmer filters. And we can alter that to whatever we want. We can have a cooling filter. Uh, the one that I use often here is this cooling filter here. And I just bring back the density. And I can kind of match it to the blues that's in the dress. This is a kind of a nice palette going on here because we've got the contrast between the skin tones and the blue background. So it's complementary. Uh, we've got the complementary colors of the background against the pinks over here in the dress. Okay, now we could come over to violet. We can change the background to violet. We can increase that violet amount that matches with the violet in the dress here. So that's what we were talking about, those color matching elements, okay? And look at that, that's really looking stunning. You know, we didn't purchase a purple backdrop. Uh, we didn't purchase any of the colors here. You know, it's completely up to us as to the colors we want to select as our background. So we can come in here, we can make it green, we can make it yellow-ish, <laughs> yellow-ish. Uh, we can come in here and make it red, orange, whatever colors you want. Right, there we go, folks. I uh, could come in here and create another layer over the top of this. And go hue, saturation. Come and click on the little hand tool here. Come onto this color over here. Uh, make a rough selection of that color. Excluding her skin tones, obviously. So we're just going to tell Photoshop just to come in and select those colors over there and uh, we could easily get those colors matching in with what we got in the background if we wanted to kind of like that kind of like so <laughs> look at that and we've got this beautiful color harmony going on in our image right folks as you can see we've just separated our subject at high speed from our backdrop so we can change the colors now if you've got multiple uh, multiple images from the same scene um, and you want to uh, copy these values you simply open your other image and do the extraction and can just drag this photo filter over to the other image all right or you can remember what values were selected in terms of the HSB, RGB, all of these values, just make a note of what those values are and the uh, density over there and you can apply the same color in the backdrop as what you've got over here. Okay folks, I hope that's useful and I hope it saves you a couple of pennies in terms of buying different color backdrops. Um, this is just the high speed way I like to do it and it works for me and it's very simple, you know, it doesn't have to be super accurate in terms of the subject selection um, the reason i say that is because uh, the photo filter if you drag it over the top of this you can see it only discolors the subject slightly um, so even if there was a little bit of an edge where it didn't select it nicely like you can see over here uh, you could simply come over to the photo filter layer go to the mask here and come to the pen tool make sure we've got black set or white set depends on what color your mask is here and you can just uh neaten up that edge over there 
so we don't have the bleed of that background onto the subject anyway. Or alternatively, you can see this little bit of gray area here where the mask wasn't selected, so you can come to your background over here, uh, or this uh, subject over here, and you can create a mask there too. And you can, with a paintbrush set to black, uh, just reveal the color of that background in these little areas here. So that's just neatening up that mask essentially. Uh, maybe over here too. But I think that's looking good. So folks, there you go. Quick color change of a backdrop. And it's great for matching colors of your subject's uh, attire. And a very, very simple way of doing that. Folks, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, you know, do you click the link below in the description to head on over to our website where you can find more tutorials. Um, if you click on the link over here, for example, and you go over to Shoot, Create, Captivate, uh, we've got a ton of post-processing tutorials over here. Um, these were all of our sessions from uh, 2018. There's 23 of them. I've decided to bundle them all in the 2018 all-in-one bundle here, which comes with a free pre-recorded natural light masterclass and our VW camper van adventure for free. And that's only $99 and it gives you a wealth of knowledge on how to edit, or how I edit my images and how I light them, um, color theory, posing. Um, it's, it's literally almost 24 hours of uh, video tutorials. And then of course we've got our new 2019 collection that's just out. Um, these sessions are quite involved. Uh, we do go into a lot of detail in terms of um, post-production, but more so uh, recordings of our scene live. And then of course, live through the viewfinder, which is awesome. You get to see our settings. You get to see live action through the viewfinder. Right, folks, thank you very much for joining me today and hope to see you soon. Ciao for now.